Today on Wood Turning, we've got a project that's going to be right up your alley. We're going to make a bowling ball and bowling pin lamp. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools. Thompson Lathe Tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. This is a really fun project. I saw some people on the internet turning bowling balls and they just made bowls out of them. And I thought, well, we can do a little bit better than that because this is plastic. We can get light to shine through it. And I thought, well, we'll make it a lamp. Well, what would be a better base for a lamp than using a bowling pin? And I bought two dozen or a dozen bowling pins on eBay that were used and looked terrible. And I thought, well, maybe I can get the plastic off or clean it up. And as I'm doing it, I found out there's this beautiful wood underneath. So we'll talk about this assembly and stuff a little bit later. But let's get back onto the lathe and have some fun now. I found my bowling balls on eBay and I went for the cheapest ones possible, which inadvertently was a good thing because they make very expensive bowling balls where the insides are weighted to one side. So when you try to do your curve, it accentuates it. You want one that's cheap because that generally means it doesn't have any weighting to the side. So it's going to be uh, even when you put it on the lathe. You don't want it to be out of round. So stay. So then I got thinking about out of round. If you put this between points, it's going to be almost impossible to get this to center up perfectly. So I'm using my big jaws on my easy wood chuck. I'm putting this in like so. Now that, that, <laughs> that is slippery, but that is a hole there, right? So as I push it, push it into there, now I'm centered on that and watch, we are perfectly centered right there. Right now, I'm working on making a tenon on the end of the bowling ball because this is gonna be the opening for the lampshade on the bottom. But I need the tenon so I can turn around and hold it so I can put a recess on the other end. And I am using what is making this completely possible. I, you cannot turn this with conventional tools. You have to use carbide. But the other thing is you can't use a straight flat carbide or it will tear up the surface and get a catch. But you see this recess on the top? Easy Wood recently came out with negative rake carbide scrapers. That negative rake makes it possible for me to go into something hard like this and not get a catch. It's an incredible advancement in turning and, and I love it. It is really, really good. I've used their carbides over the years and they're really good for certain things, but there are areas where they wouldn't work. This is answering all of that. So I'm going to work on this a little bit more because we want to put a nice tenon on here to put in the chuck. So the final cut on this I'm making with the original negative rake scraper. This is the uh, Doug Thompson's skew. And the thing with the negative rake scrapers is they have rounded edges so you cannot make that bevel or the tenon that you need with the dovetail with those tools. So you're going to have to come in here with the skew and make that nice crisp intersection. But that's okay. It works beautifully. So we're reversed now and all I'm doing is I'm hollowing out a shallow recess that we're going to expand the jaws into. So this is the top of the uh, lamp. So I want to make this very smooth and very clean because this will be exposed later and it's going to be harder to sand or clean up if I had to leave it messy right now. So I'll get this turned. I've just got to put an edge on there and I'll be done. Now it's reversed. Now we're going to have fun. And one design thing, if you think about it, Brian said, look, why be normal? Wouldn't it be cool to leave on there? Yeah, that would be cool if that was facing right side up. But this is the top. That's the bottom. I screwed up. <laughs> but anyway, if, if I didn't turn that off, we're going to miss out on all this cool stuff that happens right now. Because this is where this negative rake scraper by Easy Wood really, really shines. So let's start her up. 
put my face mask down pick up the speed a little bit got my tail stock up for support and now we're just going to slowly smooth out this surface Okay, now I've reversed the bowling ball. We're holding it by the tenon again because I want to get all the way up to this edge and polish this out. And you can see I've got a new little doohickey on my lathe. This is by Wood Turner's Wonders. It is a slick system. It comes with these arms and a rail that mounts to virtually any lathe. You can slide this back and forth. These arms are flexible so you can move this. It really helps with dust control because I found out the really, really hard way when I did this project the first time, the inside is extremely dusty and I didn't have any dust control. And uh, you'll see a picture, it is horrible. My entire shop turned white. It took me six hours to clean the shop, wipe everything down and clean it by hand, it's so bad. So if you can use any sort of dust control in this project, use it and use breathing protection because who knows what they make these things out of. Now I'm applying some Yorkshire grit. <laughs> I always say that wrong. I always get half a cunt, uh, entire continent mad at me. But anyway, it is abrasive paste. And a little goes a long ways. But I'm just applying on to get a coat on here because then we'll buff it in. It removes all those fine scratches. <sighs> and I'm going to do that in here in a minute. But anyway, so I'm just working this in with some cheap paper towels. And believe me, they're cheap. I bought them in an emergency. I had to have paper towels for my car. I ran out of oil. Ah, don't tell anybody that, though. So I don't have to go down to here because that's going to be cut away. That's going to be the bottom. So Okay, so we got a good layer on there. Now we're just going to start kind of buffing it off. And this is where it's going to get rid of all those micro scratches that we have from the sandpaper. I went to 400 grit. Okay. Now, get that off as much as I can. Take a quick look at it. Yeah, it's going good. I got a little too much paste on there, so I'll get some more paper towel to get that off. Um, the next thing after this is I'm going to go to the Yorkshire Grit Micro Fine Abrasive Paste. And that's really going to put the polish back on. So, this just takes a little more futzin. <laughs> and it's going to really look cool. Oh, here's our last little bit of buffing with the microfine Yorkshire grit. See how it looks. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. By the way, if you notice there's no holes in this ball, uh, I bought it on eBay and they didn't mention that part. I guess it's a brand new ball. So you can use the holes to good effect if you want to, if you have holes in yours. But uh, right now, this is going to be a pretty cool looking shade. So, this kind of matches my head. <laughs> uh, the aesthetics of the lamp is we want the lampshade to come down and around a little bit. If you bring it up here too high, you're going to see the element underneath. If you bring it down too low, you're not going to look like a lampshade. So, obviously, we're going to take really precise measurements and kind of just eye it in. The goal is we want to core out the bowling ball. So this is where the tailstock is right now. and We want to come in here and move out as much stuff as possible and then snap this out of here because that way I can have tailstock support while I'm doing that little bit. So we're going to go back to our, where did I put it? Yeah, there it is. Actually, we'll go with our little one. They make a little bitty uh, one that I started with and I'm going to go back to it. So let's see, I'm going to raise this up just a tick. And so we'll just start, whoops, knock that with my head. We're just going to make our mark and figure out where our edge is, and then we're going to remove a bunch of material. Bring up speed. Just come in and make a gentle mark. Make sure you have this tool flat when you use it. You never want to point the tip up. That looks pretty good. We'll work with this for right now. Okay, now we're getting to the center, and this is so cool. See the shavings coming off? Ha <laughs> ha! That's so much better than my last bowling ball. The other one was really powdery, 
and that's why my whole shop turned white and looked so bad. This stuff is a different blend or whatever because it's cutting rather than dusting up. So I'm not going to need any extra dust protection. That is awesome. But you can see I'm just working. <laughs> it's hard to see sometimes. <laughs> I'm working my way through this. And this negative rake scraper works really well. So I just want to keep willing this away so that we can start the hollowing process. And this is too cool. I can't remember the last time I've cut something like this. It's been this much fun. Hey, Brian, what you doing? <laughs> Okay, I popped the core out and I've got a handy dandy tool we're going to use later on the uh, bowling pin. This is a lamp auger. So it's a really long drill with a really long shaft so you can drill really deep holes. <laughs> so I thought, well, I might as well use it on this because we have to have a hole that goes all the way through the top of this so our uh, hardware can go through the top of the bowling ball. So I'm just going to work this in and go all the way through. The chuck has a hole in the center so this won't hit anything. Now we're ready for hollowing. So I have my elbow tool set up. It's an excellent rig for hollowing. And might I say that myself since I sell them? But anyway, I've got the laser system set up and so I have the width of my wall that I want. This bowling ball, as you can tell, is a lot thinner than my other bowling ball. It was, my other one was almost an inch thick, so this is cool. The white's going to be almost my guideline. So anyway, let's get this going. Turn it on slowly. And remember, you're just being held by a chuck, so you don't want to put a lot of pressure on this. You want to just take little cuts. And right now I'm using the uh, carbon. It's a high-speed uh, tool tip with 5% carbon, and it cuts this beautifully. You could use another carbide if you want. You could even use the easy wood tools in here, but you're going to have a reach after a while off the tool rest. It's so long, I just feel a little more comfortable using this tool. And yeah, this is so much nicer than the last time. No dust. <laughs> I'm very happy. Wow, <laughs> it's been about 20 minutes and this is kind of like cleaning out a pumpkin or something. My goodness, I only have one more cut to make. <laughs> uh, I had to go ultra thin on this one because this is not as, this is opaque. This is not as translucent as the other one. So it's harder to get the light through here. So I'm at a 16th of an inch, but that's why this laser system works so well. It really helps you find your edge. So there we are, I'm gonna leave a little light white <laughs> in the top of it there because we're getting really thin at this point. The walls on this thing to begin with were only, oh man, three-eighths of an inch thick, so it didn't give me a lot to play with as far as where my tenon is, my recessed tenon, so I have to be really careful. We have the bowling pin mounted on the lathe. I used a worm screw, and what's really cool is these at least came with a hole in it that's just the perfect size to put the screw in. So it grips great, works well. And remember when we drilled the hole in the bowling ball with the uh, auger, the lamp post doohickey, this thing? I went ahead and drilled through this already so we have a hole going all the way through the bottom and that's for the electric cable. So the neat thing is this is a plastic shroud on here. Now we'll get it going and just slowly turn away the plastic. And it puts out some neat ribbons too. But I'm using a Thompson tool here. There you go, see that came loose, that's easy to get off. Gonna come here, that's loose. That's loose. I don't wanna go into the wood too much because I'm gonna have to sand that and clean it up here in a second. There we go. So I'll just cut those off as I come to them or I can just come this way and just completely turn it off. <laughs> Got a little wood there, there we go. Now, if you want to, you can leave these rings on here if you think it's a cool look. I prefer the wood look, but you do what you want. Ow, 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 ow. Whips at you, too. <laughs> now, 
Now this might look a little rugged once you get the plastic off, but sometimes it hangs onto the wood and it tears the grain out a bit because this is all laminated together. So you're going to run into that issue, but you know, nothing 80 grit can't fix. <laughs> but I'm looking at this and this is my best side right here, I think. So the idea is, is I want to take this all the way around and here on this side, I want to drill a hole. So I'm going to lock this in, right? That'll work. And so I'm going to take this drill and now drill a hole through to the hole we've already drilled through. There we go. Cool. There's some plastic, there's some metal in here, so you want to make sure you're high enough up, you don't hit that metal because that's, I think that's the weight for the pin. But anyway, so that looks good. So, a bit of sandpaper is the next thing on, uh, in order. Da -da -da -da, drum roll. Oh, that is beautiful. That's better than I thought. That's a sixteenth of an inch thin all the way through. So that's why we're getting some light through there. That green is really thick. You can't get a lot of light through it, but the yellow came through good. So anyway, all I did was I got a kit from Craft Supplies. I am not an electrician, so I'm not going to show you how to put this together. The only thing I had to change from it is, I don't know if you can see it, but this hoop right here, that holds up the lamp shade was too tall, so I had to go to a local hardware store and buy a shorter one. And then I had to put in a short uh, LED bulb because I don't want any heat in here. So I went ahead and put a hand rubbed uh, oil coat on here. It looks really nice. So that is how you make a lamp from a bowling ball and a bowling pin. Until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools. Thompson Lathe Tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.